Are you ready for Thursday night football? How long have we been talking about this game tonight between the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs? It's been months and months on end. And I do want to look at this game where I believe the Ravens want to exact revenge. Last year was all on the table. Let's go through that 2023 season overall. The one thing we knew about the Kansas City Chiefs, they always had Patrick Mahomes. They were always going to be a threat, but they had their struggles during the season. We always thought they would win the division, but what's the always the argument? And if you take it all the way back to those New England Patriots days, guys, what was it? They're going to get easy wins in their division. They have Tom Brady, one of the best quarterbacks in the history of professional sports here, that you're going to get an easy five to six wins. Then you're going to win a handful of games outside of your division, and you're going to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs in New England. Good luck beating Tom Brady and the Patriots. Now, granted, there were scenarios where Tom Brady went on the road and still won a Super Bowl through the AFC path. I understand that. But the one thing you never want to see is it just seems like it's a rite of passage for Kansas City to be in the AFC championship game and that AFC championship game to be at home at Arrowhead. Last year, you finally had, you said, you know what? Kansas City isn't as talented on offense as they were the past couple years. This is the year to get them. They no longer have the number one overall seed, which meant they're going to have to go on the road in the divisional round and the AFC championship round and be two unbelievably talented quality opponents before they even can get to the Super Bowl if they won against a team in the NFC that we probably all thought would be the San Francisco 49ers, and it was. We watched Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs go into Buffalo, and beat the Buffalo Bills. And I said to myself, that's pretty impressive there. I thought the Buffalo Bills probably would be able to beat them. But I know in my heart that following week, the Baltimore Ravens, who to me were the best overall team in football, would finally be able to exact revenge on the Kansas City Chiefs and knock them out on their way to a Super Bowl championship. I can't remember a time in my betting history. And again, fandom, we've all been destroyed and crushed, right? Worst loss I've ever watched in my life live was the 2002 NFC Championship game, last game at Veterans Stadium against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where I still think Rondé Barber is running down the field with an interception, crushing my hopes and dreams. But that was as a fan here. I thought the Eagles would win the championship that year. They didn't. But watching and betting Baltimore from day one saying, this is going to be my Super Bowl team and have them play so well throughout the remaining parts of the regular season hammering the San Francisco 49ers having the number one overall seed I said this is the game they're going to pound the Kansas City Chiefs and they came in that with one of the worst offensive game plans I've ever seen from an NFL team getting away from their strengths which allowed the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey to win that football game and move on into the Super Bowl and we know what happened there close game late correct me if I'm wrong here I believe that game did go to overtime with a victory there for the Chiefs. A phenomenal Super Bowl overall, which brings us again to opening night. So what are we going to get out of the Baltimore Ravens in this game? We also saw last year, hey, you're never going to beat a team on ring night in their own building. No, we saw the Detroit Lions go in there and handle the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, was it because a couple drop passes by certain players? You probably could figure that in. Chris Jones sitting out in the stands and watching that game. Yeah, he's going to be in uniform tonight, ready to go. But I'm just looking forward to saying if Baltimore can get Get back to the basics. There's no reason to believe they can't win this game. If you look at the lines here at the FanDuel Sportsbook, they opened up as a minus two and a half point favorite towards Kansas City. Across the board, which includes the FanDuel Sportsbook, that line now sits at three. And I think that's a pretty fair line. For the total here in New Jersey on the FanDuel Sportsbook, opened up at 46 and a half. Today in New Jersey, it still sits at 46 and a half. Other outlets have moved those numbers higher to 47s. We're going against, look, and I understand Kansas City, the strength of that team is never the defense. But Steve Spagnuolo, one of the single best coordinators in the NFL, always has some great things to offer. And also keep in mind, it's game number one. You know as well as I do, both of these football teams circled this game the minute the calendar came out and got ready installing processes to try to stop Lamar Jackson and also to try to stop Patrick Mahomes. I think that could play into it. It is hard, however, to say you want an under in a game with regular season Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, both of these quarterbacks, at the end of the season, if healthy, will probably be in that one, two, and three in MVP voting. So the question is going to be tonight, who is going to be fresher? The thing that I really like about this game as well, thinking back in the in the offseason, 
you have to sort of like the edge that the Ravens are going to have coming in tonight because they were embarrassed at home and all their dreams were shattered, only to see Kansas City win their second straight Super Bowl title, now on the road to possibly win three in a row. The thing I do get a kick out of here is Lamar Jackson in the offseason. We know he is the single most dynamic quarterback in the NFL. That's not even up for debate. And he lost a couple pounds to get even quicker on the season starts. Because if you look at some of the prop bets tonight on Lamar Jackson, they're pretty fair. 217 and a half passing yards. You take a look at the passing touchdowns, of course, listed at one and a half. I think you can get both of those. But I love that rushing prop. And also keep in mind at the FanDuel Sportsbook earlier in this week, that rushing prop for Lamar Jackson tonight was sitting at 46 and a half. That's now up to 48 and a half. And other outlets, even close to 50 rushing yards. To me... Sometimes you look at it and say, it's going to be a long NFL season. I need my guys to stay healthy. So in weeks 9, 10, and 11, instead of on third and seven, selling out to get that first down, maybe I run out of bounds after five yards, live the fight another day. It doesn't feel like it's one of those environments tonight at Arrowhead. It feels like a Super Bowl berth is on the line, despite it only being week number one. So you look at Patrick Mahomes on the other side. We always call this as well. And Kevin and Joe, we do the Pro Football Today football show on Sunday mornings. And certainly we'll be doing some action on Monday and Thursday during the games itself. We always talk about Patrick Mahomes as what? He's a big game runner. You don't think of Patrick Mahomes as being one of the best runners in football. But my goodness, I mean, I stood... Anybody see it firsthand against the Philadelphia Eagles in their Super Bowl final drive of the game on a hobbled high ankle sprain, sprinting 20 to 30 yards downfield here? He's one of the best big-time scramblers out there. So you look at his rushing prop tonight at 20 and a half. I think both of these quarterbacks legitimately should go over their rushing props. And again, we're not even talking about running back position. We're talking about the quarterback position going over those rushing props. But also, you see the passing touchdowns. And the juice varies between Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. We do know that. But looking at last year's Kansas City team, where were they devoid of talent overall, right? You just leaned on a rookie in Rasheed Rice saying, be our savior at the wide receiver position. And he did a pretty good job at doing that. Now coming back for his second season, it doesn't look like he's going to be suspended this year. So he should be the go-to guy. But also adding Xavier Worthy in the draft, that true deep threat that you have been basically lacking. And I understand, like, hey, Donnie, do you remember MVS? He was, yeah, MVS was fast, basically couldn't catch. And if he caught 15 yards worth of passes in a game, it seemed like that was a massive success for the Kansas City Chiefs. But now you add Worthy to the outside. You got Rasheed Rice that's going to be working that slot position. You also have Marquise Brown, who's injured and should be back shortly in the month of September as a formidable wide receiving core that is much better, guys, than what we saw last year. Travis Kelsey in his mid-30s. The one thing that you do know about football players, typically, most of the time you don't start the season injured, right? As the season goes on, you might say, boy, it looks like that guy lost a step. Why? Because he's a 35-year-old skilled position player. We're talking about Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends, if not the best ever to do it. You expect him to be on his game tonight, but don't leave this one out. I know we'll get to some more prop bets a little bit later, but I'm just setting up the game plan here, which I do think will be effective. The 12 formation here for the Baltimore Ravens. If you're new to NFL football, just don't know that jargon. It just means two tight end sets. If you're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs, they got two solid tight ends, but maybe the best tight end duo in football, I think it resides in Baltimore. Now, Mark Andrews last year had a devastating leg injury, missed the remaining parts of the season, tried to hobble back at the end, and it didn't work out in his favor. But if you get him healthy tonight, Andrews, along with Isaiah Likely, that 12 formation with those two tight ends on the football field, they can do a lot of damage. Because the one thing I don't love is the wide receiving core here for the Baltimore Ravens. Rashad Bateman, former first-round draft pick, hasn't lived up to the hype. I did like what I saw last year at Isaiah Flowers, and I think he can take that next step. And by the way, you know he's chomping at the bit to get after this Kansas City team because do you remember the pivotal game in the AFC Championship game? Excuse me, the pivotal play in the AFC Championship game last year? Yeah, it was Zay Flowers diving into the end zone. Should have been a touchdown. Ended up being a fumble. And that was basically a game, set, match right there with all that momentum flying out the window. So a lot of players have a lot to prove, but maybe none bigger than just the offensive scheme of the Baltimore Ravens as they try to attack the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm telling you right now, look out for Lively tonight and also look out for Mark Andrews. I think they can do a lot of damage. And oh yeah, there's still Derrick Henry. There's still Isaiah Pacheco. There's still a lot more to talk about in this game. And we're excited to talk about it right here on the early line. Down your right side, Ben Stevens. We'll be back. Yeah, Thursday night football right here on the early line, cracking into it, having some fun. And I understand it feels like we've been talking about this game for months on end, but doesn't it just feel more refreshing when you're talking about the morning of the game? So many opportunities. And I always say this, each and every year on opening night, 
Now, granted, I love college football. You know me. I enjoyed my Miami Hurricanes over the weekend, wasting the Florida Gators. And I might have an interesting season to watch on a collegiate level from a fan perspective. But I always like to remember these moments. And no, not because Ben Stevens isn't here at this point and I'm running a solo show right now. I like to remember this because I know that pretty soon you're going to say to yourself, boy, it's already week five. Wow. How did it get to week eight? Oh, the playoffs are here. How exciting. Oh, no, we only have four games left in the regular season. Oh, no, it's the playoffs. Oh, it's the Super Bowl. And what am I going to do? Let's break out the brackets here for March Madness. So enjoy this time, the fun of the day before the season. And also, guys, if you're in survivor contests out there, right, you're trying to line up who you're going to pick this week, the most dangerous week of the entire season. And if everybody is loaded up on those Cincinnati Bengals this weekend, and for some reason Jamar Chase doesn't show up and you get a great defensive effort out of the New England Patriots, everybody's pools will be up in smoke. Fantasy seasons, people lining up and analyzing their rosters all week long, only to probably second-guess themselves and make those wrong decisions. How many times have you done that, by the way, in your fantasy, guys? You have on Sunday morning, like, you know what? I'm going to sit this wide receiver. I'm going to play another wide receiver. Dude on the bench goes off, six catches, 108 yards, two touchdowns. Your starter gets injured in the first quarter. Why didn't I just start that guy so that fun is always here and the anticipation coming into it but also sometimes just taking a look at the rosters themselves because I always say this too the first two weeks of the season by far are the toughest two weeks in professional sports the reason being is yes you are going to improve a lot between weeks one and weeks two primarily we always talk about that, like high school and college football like hey dress rehearsal out there these are professional athletes so it is a little bit different but we are going to have so many overreactions once we get to next tuesday when every one of these games is be completed saying this team stinks this team is great only to find out in week number two hey This team isn't as good as we thought they were, and this team nearly isn't as bad as they thought they were. But week one surprises are going to be absolutely tremendous. If we're looking at the game itself tonight, though, right, superstars all over the field. We already talked about Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. But from a betting standpoint, sometimes you get a little bit nervous, right, because Back in the day, as we like to say, and we had Sean Alexander on the air with us uh, last week, actually, excuse me, a little bit earlier this week, and we were talking about, you know, how great a running back he was in the fantasy ranks. And just because he was the last, it felt like, of those true three down backs that could carry the football 30 plus times a game with ease and also still do all the third down capabilities like picking up the blitz and catching the football out of the backfield. The reason I bring that up is if you're looking at Derrick Henry and Isaiah Pacheco, you might say to yourself, Oh, I wonder who the backup running backs are and how much gas will they have in the tank here for game number one. 65 and a half yards is the prop for Derrick Henry. 61 and a half yards is the prop for Isaiah Pacheco. Legitimately, I think they both have a great chance to go over that. But primarily, Derrick Henry. He's never going to be as healthy and as excited as he is going to be in game number one. Number two, isn't the way you attack the Kansas City Chiefs not necessarily by taking a look at throwing dart after dart down the field? You saw the well that worked for you in the AFC Championship game. And Ben, I'm just going over Derrick Henry's stuff here tonight. I expect big things from him tonight, and I would be surprised if he doesn't get 20 carries tonight. DRS, where do we leave off, my friend? Kudos to you for 48 straight minutes. Missed it. Oh, I think we're still good. Uh, I hope we're still good. Yeah, we're still here. Okay, we're ready to go. I think we are set. Derrick Henry in his debut against Kansas City. DRS, we have mm-hmm. often talked about if there is a blueprint. In the six seasons that Patrick Mahomes has been the starting quarterback in Kansas City of finding a way to consistently compete and then beat the Chiefs. I'm not so sure there is one. Natural thought would be slow down the game, run it on offense, tighten up the clock, and keep the ball out of 15's hands in red. I'm not entirely sure. I do think Todd Munkin probably learned from what he did in the AFC Championship game in Baltimore last January to try to maybe establish the run a little bit more than possible. But there would see that recipe with Lamar Jackson being 12-2 and against the spread when booked as an underdog to flock a very good underdog team. And now you add in Derrick Henry in the backfield, you would expect a lot of ground attack tonight for the flock. Yeah, because you're looking at Justice Hill, who, again, is a capable backup, and then Rasheen Ali, who actually has been banged up in practice, not even sure he's going to be able to go tonight. So you would figure that the bulk of the carries are going to come from Derrick Henry, rightfully so. You didn't go out and get this guy, Ben, and say, you know what? Let's ease you into the season. No big deal if you get 10 carries tonight if we needed you, and we lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. This game feels so much more important because at the end of the season, this is going to be a massive tiebreaker game that you want to win this so you can ensure that you might have home field advantage in your build 
building, depending on who wins. And the same thing, Ben, goes for the Kansas City Chiefs as well. Look at their running back situation. You take a look at Clyde yeah. edwards Lair, who's not going to play for the first four games. That was a former first-round draft pick that you figure could be able to get some carries. Now you take a look here at Isaiah Pacheco. Samaji Pirine, okay, how many carries and plays is he going to steal? Carson Steele, how many plays is he going to take away from Isaiah Pacheco? So this might be one of the better looks on opening night for starting running backs that you're going to find this weekend where you expect the yeah. bulk of the carries and no surprises coming from Derrick Henry and Isaiah Pacheco. You know, I do wonder, DRS, about the rushing attempts prop for both of these backs. When you look at Derrick Henry, he turned 30 in January. Normally, that's when running backs fall <laughs> off, but thus he is referred to as the king. Last year, yeah. still led the National Football League as a member of the Titans with 280 carries and finished second in rushing yardage with 1,167. He went over this number of 65 and a hook in eight games last year for the Titans. In seven of the eight, he had at least 17 rushing attempts, which would also then correlate to the over of the attempts prop. That might be an area I look in terms of that output against KC. And let's not forget, the Chiefs were a very good defense last year. When the offensive woes were really plaguing Kansas City throughout much of the regular season, it was the defense, first and foremost, that stepped up under Steve Spagnuolo, which is not often the case, DRS. When the Chiefs had won Super Bowls and appeared in the AFC Championship in years past, it was a defense that improved throughout the year, certainly by postseason time. Last year, Kansas City's D led the way. Yeah, it was. And also, Steve Spagnuolo, one of the best defensive coordinators in football. You do lose that one corner, but they're still, they're not vulnerable in that secondary. I think they're vulnerable mm -hmm. up the middle and also at the linebacker position. So something to keep an eye on. But a great game to talk about. So many angles from so many certain directions here, Ben. And we'll look at the outlook for both of these teams. Will they find themselves in an AFC title game again? Next. The first game of the 2024 NFL season was one of the final in 2023, the AFC Championship game in Baltimore. The Chiefs, as a four-and-a-half-point underdog, go into the Charm City and knock off Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, winning outright in that football game to appear in their fourth Super Bowl in the last six years in a second consecutive Lombardi Trophy. In the last football game, or one of the final football games of last year, is our start to this year, where we expect at the end of 2024's NFL campaign, DRS, both the Ravens and the Chiefs will be contending for a conference crown once again. Kansas City has the highest win total entering 2024 around the National Football League. 11 and a half is the number. The over has the juice. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh boy, that's a little steep. Last year, an 11-6 and six KC team was the first of the full six seasons that Mahomes has been the starter inside Arrowhead that the Chiefs did not go over 11 and a half, winning at least 12 regular season games. That was the weird thing about last season. It was the first to buck a couple of trends for the Chiefs. The first time they won 11 games or less. The first time they played in the AFC title game, but not in Kansas City, and yet... The Chiefs still ended up winning a Super Bowl. Let's start with KC. Your outlook for the Chiefs this year, DRS, is what? Super Bowl. It's all that isn't that what it always is, Ben? Like I, you know, yeah. I just got done talking about how many times it's just like it's the rite of passage to host the AFC championship game in Arrowhead every year. They didn't even get to do that last year. It didn't matter. They still went to the Super Bowl and then beat who I thought was a much more talented than they were team because why? It's Patrick Mahomes. So I ask you this question. And there were times, Ben, last year during the season where I started to say, like, yeah. ooh, look at that. Travis Kelsey is really slowing down a bit here. Maybe lost a mm -hmm. step, maybe lost a step and a half. Then looking like he's the greatest tight end in the world throughout that playoff run. So nothing is real sometimes with Kansas City. So you're not supposed to do this. I've explained this multiple times. Oh, my goodness. Did that Patrick Mahomes, I don't care who else is on the field. I don't care if their offensive line stinks, their wide receiving core is bad. But it just feels that way, right? Same way with Tom Brady. Yep. Hey, he doesn't have that many weapons here. So what? It's Tom Brady. He just makes things happen. And that's what you find with Patrick Mahomes. So even if they lose this game on opening night, and even last year, Ben, the struggles right around midseason for the Chiefs, ooh, they're not the same team they were. 
somehow Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, if they're healthy in the playoffs, just hell on wheels out there. They don't care where they play, who they play, or who they have available on their own team to use in that game. So I see to myself and see those totals. Yeah, they should be a 12-win football team. They should win the division, Ben. They should have home field advantage in the AFC playoffs. And who's going to be able to knock them out in Arrowhead? Not very many teams can do that. So I look at myself and say, start to the season, chalky, don't care. Kansas City, the best team in the NFL for me. And, Donnie, you would expect a team that is repeated at a, as a Super Bowl champ to have then a very difficult schedule. Marquee games in prime time chalked up throughout the entirety of the slate. But the AFC West not expected to be nearly as good as at least the expectation was the past three, four, five NFL seasons. Casey actually enters this year with the 10th easiest schedule in the National Football League. The 10th most difficult, that is Baltimore. They play in the most difficult division. That's the AFC North. Lamar Jackson has been the starter for the Ravens in large part for the last five seasons around the National Football League. Ten and a half the win total for the flock. The over has the juice. They're a slight favorite to win the AFC North for a second straight season. In those five seasons with Lamar Jackson, DRS, over ten and a half in three of the five. Will it be four out of six? I'm telling you, the one thing you can't do is bet against the Baltimore Ravens in the regular season if Lamar Jackson is playing quarterback. He is phenomenal, as good as it gets, and so hard to prepare for on a week-to-week basis. There's no question about that now. The questions do come up in the playoffs here, and it's not our fault. It's not the common, hey, Donnie and Ben are ragging on him. It's not as if he's saying, look, Lamar Jackson had four years in a row where he went to the playoffs, got to the Super Bowl, picked up one Super Bowl win. We would never be able to go back and say, like, oh, this guy can't perform in the playoffs. And we're not saying he's not capable of doing that. We just don't have that track record of him going out and seizing the day. He had a chance to do that in the AFC Championship game. Now, granted, fumbles at the goal line do hurt, but some terrible passes down the stretch there really go, you know what, I can't can't bet on this team but if this team was in the AFC West like the Chiefs are and you put the Chiefs in the AFC North these would be two different scenarios as well we've said oh look at that the 11 and a half actually should be the Baltimore Ravens the only reason they're 10 and a half in the regular season they don't get there because catastrophic injuries which we saw Lamar Jackson a few years ago or they're yeah. just playing unbelievable competition on a week-to-week basis Two and four. That is Lamar Jackson's playoff record. But when he has won the NFL MVP award twice in 2019 and last season, the Ravens have won at least 13 games. I expect Baltimore to be back to an AFC title game that I'm a little bit more skeptical of. Our 2024 NFL season pick six when hour two starts next. Welcome to hour number two, a second hour I hope to be here for the entirety Mm. of the 60 minutes. He is Donnie Wrightside. I am Ben Stevens. It is NFL game day once again. The season opens tonight in 2024 inside Arrowhead Stadium at the home of the two-time reigning Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. KC will play host to the Baltimore Ravens in a rematch of the AFC title game from a season ago. And we will get you set continuously for this Thursday night debut. We'll talk some college football entering a huge week Mm. two Saturday slate here in this second hour. And Donnie and I will go the season opener and beyond. Our 2024 NFL season pick six for the entirety of this opening half hour of our second hour. Still two more hours to go. Donnie right side up until 11 a.m. Eastern. Feels like we had through three hours already this morning here. Still waiting on this football <laughs> game tonight to have happen at this point. Yes, and by the way, you know, shout out. Like, if this happens again, Ben, let's just say you freeze up at this <laughs> time. On. Like, don't be disappointed yeah. if I freeze up right behind you. Like, the unprofessional <laughs> thing to do since you have a home studio is you can kick wires and cords out anytime you want. And be like, oh, yeah. I don't know what happened. Now, you know DRS would never do that because the people need right. a show to continue at this point. But if there's a point here in hour number two where BWS goes out and I go out at the same time, look, don't blame your boy here. Blame the technology at this point. But I'm not saying I'm doing that. The show must go on, and I'm ready to do it here. So how about that? I agree, DRS. I would agree with you taking the day, and then maybe we'll figure something out behind (laughs) that. All right, let's dive into our pick six. Here are the six categories for our season-long pick six in 2024. Our Super Bowl champ pick. Or MVP selection, a team win total we like to the over and to the under, a division winner to keep an eye on in a season-long player prop where Donnie and I are both going with a rookie quarterback. We'll talk about that in just a Mm. moment. Let's start 
with the team that will hoist the Lombardi Trophy under the night sky in the Big Easy. Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans in the middle of February. Donnie, who's winning the Super Bowl in 2024? Yeah, I got the Kansas City Chiefs at a plus 550 price and just told you that. Now, to show my how I've evolved in this business, Ben, there were times where I might have told you before, like, hey, Donnie, who do you think's winning the championship? I think it's the Miami Dolphins. Like, oh, no, I actually picked the Kansas City Chiefs in the next segment here. So you got to backtrack a little bit. But we're on point here to start the season. It will be the Chiefs at a plus 550 price. Why? I told you. It's Patrick Mahomes. Understand this. We can't enter into the season and say to ourselves, Ben, well, if this guy gets hurt, I can't win a championship. That's not how it's done. Injuries are going to happen. You you just hope they're not catastrophic. And if Patrick Mahomes plays in all 17 games over this 18-game schedule and into the playoffs, why not? They've done it twice in the past. And I understand if you are a trend better out there, and that's all you stick to. Donnie, it's been a lot of Super Bowls out there. Nobody's ever won three in a row, so you can't bet into three in a row. Stop the madness here. Each and every season is on its own individualistic look here, right? So if I think Kansas City is the best to start the season, I can't say nobody's ever won three, so why are you betting it here? Well, nobody's ever had Patrick Mahomes for three straight Super Bowl runs yeah. like the Kansas City Chiefs are about to have it here. You could see Kelsey slow down. You could see that defense give up trunk plays. You could see the Kansas City Chiefs like they did last year, Ben, midway through the season, struggling just a bit, saying, ooh, maybe they're not the Chiefs of old. But starting this season at home, ring ceremony, and also, sometimes you might say, like, I just won a Super Bowl. Oh, my, my career is complete. I don't have to win another one. I think the Chiefs are extra invigorated entering into the season, knowing they can do something that nobody has ever done in the history of this sport during the times of the Super Bowl, and that's win three yeah. in a row. That's good enough for me. I think the Chiefs have the best quarterback and the best head coach, and they should be able to win a third straight Super Bowl. I'll go chalk. I don't care. It's the Chiefs for me. Again, nobody has ever won three consecutive Lombardi trophies in the history of the National Football League. Eight teams have won two straight Super Bowl championships. All eight of those teams have all failed to reach even a third consecutive Super Bowl. We have seen three franchises play in three straight Super Bowls, but not necessarily with a chance to repeat for a third consecutive season in that third try. In fact, of the eight teams to win two consecutive and hoping to three-peat, three have missed out on the playoffs. The team that had the best chance, at least the most recent team, and hoping for three, the Patriots back in the mid-2000s. They got bumped in the divisional round in their third season looking for that Super Bowl championship. I hope you do not think, my friend, that I am putting the kibosh on your Philadelphia Eagles mm. because they are my pick to win a Super Bowl championship in 2024, a 13-1 to number on Philly. I remain pretty optimistic on the Birds entering this season. When you look back at 2022, they played for a Super Bowl, had a lead late over Kansas City. I thought they would be back. But the biggest change to Philly last year was the coordinator shift. Both Shane Steichen mm -hmm. and Jonathan Gannon, the OC and the DC for that 2022 NFC title winning Philadelphia team got head coaching gigs. So enter Brian Johnson elevated from the quarterback spot. And they brought in, of course, on the defensive side of the football, Sean Desai. And then it was Matt Patricia. And then it was Desai. It was a disaster for the birds. Nick Sirianni is not one to be actively involved in the game plan. That's fine. He's a CEO type head coach. So you got to trust the people who are coordinating the schemes. I do. Kellen Moore, the new offensive coordinator in Philadelphia, I believe provides a resurgence for this Eagles offense with so many pieces to love for Philly. On the defensive side of the football, I don't think there's a better mind still doing it than Vic Fangio. I think Philly is going to be back. And where they struggled last year, Donnie, in the secondary, defending the pass. Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, welcome in to bolster up that Birds secondary. I believe in Philadelphia getting back to an NFC title game, winning said NFC championship, likely over the Niners, because I don't think San Francisco falters much this season. But then Philadelphia will play in New Orleans in Super Bowl 59. I think the Eagles win a Super Bowl championship this season. 
Yeah, and quite frankly, there's a lot of moving pieces, but you're right about this. They're not the question marks that you had last year. Let's go over Sean Desai. Hey, look, he's going to get to be able to call the signals. Can he do it on a Super Bowl caliber team? He clearly couldn't, and neither could Matt Patricia or anybody else that tried to help that defense. Kellen Moore on offense. We know how good he was in Dallas. Things just didn't work out on an injured squad there for the Chargers last year, but a massive upgrade of what you had last year. So if you are Nick Sirianni and you are on the hot plate here, you might say to yourself, you know what? I hope these guys succeed because I'm going to be out of here. But it's okay. CEO head coaches work. Bill Belichick didn't call the defenses and the offenses there in New England. Neither does Mike Tomlin yeah. here. I love the CEO aspect to step back and say, let me manage my team. And the one thing's for sure, if a coach lost the locker room, Ben, like you saw the Philadelphia Eagles last year careening down the stretch, he didn't lose the players themselves. Nobody came out and said, this guy's terrible. Outside of Jalen Hurts, who apparently those two didn't get along with, you never heard of, we don't listen to this guy anymore. Otherwise, if that was the case, if five players said that, he would no longer be the head coach. Maybe it'd be Bill Belichick this year for the Philadelphia sure. Eagles. So looking forward to this season, you're right. The Eagles had to improve not just the defense itself, Ben, but did you watch down the stretch the Giants game, which was abysmal, where they got injured and also should never have been playing the starters and got embarrassed, but that Tampa Bay game, yeah. everybody running wide open. That's not necessarily a talent issue. That's a scheme issue, which means the coaches couldn't get through to the players on defense. That's not happening this year. Vic Fangio is the guy that goes, wait a minute, two-hour minute, a two uh, hour practice? No, no, let's make it a four-hour practice with three more hours of meetings. He's going to make sure you know where you're supposed to be, and that's half the battle with this Eagles defense. DRS, I'm not sure if the wife and the kid are home right now, if you need mm. to whisper after really anchoring the show yeah. for the opening hour. But where would a second Eagles Super Bowl title in your lifetime yeah. rank among the best days you've ever had? It would be. I, I'll tell you this. Watching that Kansas, yeah. no one already had one like in, in the back pocket here. Watching that game right. at the half. Who was it? Rihanna performing. Like, this is great. The Eagles are up double digits. Going to get another secondary yeah. trophy here. But how exciting would that have been? Yes, very exciting. But it's never going to be like your first. But getting a second just to say like, oh, it wasn't a fluke season would be nice. But I got to tell you, I told the wife the other day, like, I don't care. And this is honest. I don't care if the Eagles ever win another Super Bowl. Like, my life is complete. Like, it real, like I have everything I want in life here. So I'm living right now as good oh. as you could possibly live, man. As good as you possibly can live. I, I guess that's sweet and romantic. Wasn't sure where that was going to go. More of the pick six for 2024 next. It's the opening day of the 2024 National Football League season. We continue our pick six here on the early line to get you set for the entirety of the 2024 campaign. We both gave you our Super Bowl winners. Donnie is trusting the Chiefs to be the first team in NFL history to make history, win three consecutive Lombardi trophies. I look at Donnie's birds and think the Eagles get mm. back on top of the NFL because mainly of the coordinator change in Philadelphia. Now we will fire through the rest of our pick six. Let's start with our MVP winner in 2024. Donnie, for you, I'm, who's the guy? I'm going to go C.J. Stroud in this at a 12 to 1 price. Now, you might say, look, when you try to level out and say, what do you need to be an MVP candidate here? You actually have to have a breakout season before you're actually the MVP. And hear me out on this. So many times you see like a great offensive tackle, a great defensive lineman. You got to be at an all pro level, Ben, before what? You get voted to the all pro team. Same thing in the NBA. Remember Joel Embiid had a couple MVP seasons, not able to break through, finally broke through when you knew you were ready for him. And I feel like we might be ready for CJ Stroud, even though he's young and it's his second year. He was in that MVP race in December last year, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Patrick yeah. Mahomes and also Lamar Jackson. And if I look at the way he's performed in the preseason, they're a better football team now. They're not going to surprise us by saying, like, oh, I wonder if he can do that on the next weekend. I think they can win that division. I think they will win that, which would mean they're going to be probably a top two, three seed at least in the AFC. And heaven forbid, we talk about MVP candidates. You don't get voted on the MVP through the playoffs and the Super Bowl. This is a regular right. season award. What happens if we find ourselves? Is it so far-fetched that the Houston Texans have a 12-win season and can vie for that top overall seed? We're ready for C.J. Stroud to be great. We're expecting him yeah. to be great. This is a better football team. That young wide receiving core, another year better. Stephon Diggs with a chip on his shoulder coming over from the Buffalo Bills. I like everything I've seen out of the Houston Texans in the offseason from a free agent perspective and a preparation yeah. level that I do believe. I'm not just buying the hype and saying, oh, let me just throw a dart out here when it's easy to take, you know, Patrick Mahomes. I told you the Kansas City Chiefs win it. Isn't it hand-in-hand? -hand? I wanted a better price on a guy that says, you know what? 
there might be a chance that the Texans could get a top two seed. And why not take a 12-1 to price on a great young quarterback that showed us as a rookie he's ready to be at an MVP level, Ben? NDRS, when you look at the last six years of Super Bowl winners, you mentioned Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. We have seen only three MVP winners. Lamar has two. Pat has two. Aaron Rodgers has two. Mm -hmm. I think we get some new blood injected into this award category this year. Hard to argue, C.J. Stroud, one of five rookie quarterbacks in the history of the NFL to throw for 4,000 yards or more, the third most ever in a rookie season, 4,108. I'm looking at Joe Burrow. Entering year number five in hopefully a fully healthy season. Donnie, in our Super Bowl predictions, Mm -hmm. if we would have asked for the Super Bowl matchup in NOLA, it would have been the Eagles over the Bengals for me. I am optimistic about Cincinnati this season, despite the offseason wide receiver drama, because it is Joe Burrow. In his two fully healthy seasons, his second and third years in the National Football League, 2021-2022, the Bengals won the AFC North. The Bengals played in the AFC title game. And, of course, Cincinnati reached a Super Bowl in Los Angeles three seasons ago. In those two years, Joe Burrow himself playing at least 16 games through for 4,475 yards or more. He had 34 touchdowns in 2021, 35 TD passes in 2022, two years ago, and finished fourth in the MVP voting that season. If Joe Burrow is fully healthy, I believe the Bengals are back to an AFC title game. If that is the case, correlated to quarterback being the reason Joe Burrow wins an MVP award at 10 to 1. Exactly. We're not talking about teams here. We're talking about the MVPs here. They're going to be leaning on their defense. The quarterback is going to have to steal the show, which means a lot of yards, a lot of touchdown passes, and a lot of wins here. And I've said this multiple times, Ben, this offseason. I'm not high on the Bengals. You know how to get me back in the fold? Give Jamar Chase a record-breaking contract today or tomorrow. I want to bet them. I want to buy in on the Cincinnati Bengals. I love Joe Burrow as a quarterback. Those two wide receivers, T. Higgins, uh, granted, I have no idea how T. Higgins is happy, but apparently he is happy. And you know what else would make <laughs> them happy? Jamar Chase getting a big contract. So then you would have the triplets, as I like to say, back in there doing a lot of damage. And I want to believe them. But until I see it, but I have to understand this too. If Joe Burrow is going to win an MVP, Jamar Chase has to be there and all in. Not saying, you know what, I'm going to show up week one without a contract being playing on a million-dollar base contract where you know at any time Nick's bumps, bruises, he's going to skip meetings, he's not going to be there. Get him invested so Joe Burrow can be the best that he can be. Are they a better team with Jamar Chase on the sideline unhappy? No. He's one of the best wide receivers in football to go along with a tandem in T. Higgins. I want that to be true, and I do expect a big season from Joe Burrow this year if, if, Jamar Chase is in that building and paid well. For what it is worth, when the ball was struck last year for the opening kickoff of 2023 in Arrowhead, it's when Joe Burrow got his record second, uh, re- record-setting quarterback yep. extension as well. All right, DRS, your favorite over mm-hmm. of a win total and your favorite under. Oh, what a lightning rod here. We'll keep it quick, too. The New York Jets over nine and a half. The the team is way too talented, Ben, to win under double-digit games. I understand, again, it's the NFL. People get injured. Well, Donna, you can't say, well, look, Aaron Rodgers got injured a couple plays into the season last year and wrecked that entire year. But keep in mind, if they just had a quarterback that could play average football, top 20 quarterbacking out of 32 teams, they would have made the playoffs. They got like 32 out of 32 quarterbacking last year. That's my premises. I don't think the division is as strong because the Buffalo Bills, I don't think, are as strong as they were the past two to three years. Can the Bills win the division? Maybe they can, but I'm focused on the Jets. There's no way Aaron Rodgers is healthy this season with that lights-out defense and added and sent Brees Hall's back healthy this year. You take a look at Garrett Wilson on the one side. He's ready to take the next step. You get Mike Williams from the Chargers, who looks like he's going to be activated for game number one. This team is too talented, Ben, to not win 10 games. So my win total, I'm going over with the Jets. That's lightning rod team. They better be a 10 with 10 and seven. Come on now. That should be easy. They have not won double digit games in True. New York since the 2015 NFL season, nearly a decade ago. Quickly here, your Colts under how come? Uh, Anthony Richardson, I just don't trust him yet. You got to show me that you're going to be around 500 with that quarterback there and staying healthy for the season. Couldn't do it last year. Rescued by Gardner Minshew. No Gardner Minshew this year, Ben. So I need to see it out of him. And I don't know if we get it. I'm going under. It's truly his de facto debut in rookie season. Only four games last year. Only two complete. 
more of the pick six next. Let's finish out this 2024 NFL season pick six. My favorite win totals at this moment. I'm going to the bottom of the barrel. We go over mm, five and a yeah. half wins for the Carolina Panthers. The wow. over is gaining juice at minus 134. Donnie, it is tough to trust a team that saw Bryce Young underperform in his rookie campaign, be booked as an underdog all 17 tries, and only cover four times, four, 11, and two against the spread, let alone two outright victories. This year, things change. I was optimistic about the Panthers entering Bryce's rookie season because of the pieces in place in Carolina. The offensive line got better. I believe there are some offensive pieces there. Miles Sanders, Chuba Hubbard, whatever way you want to do it. I love the addition of Xavier Leggett, who is there as the wide receiver spot as well with the best accent in all of the National Football League. Defense will be okay. The 11th easiest schedule for Carolina. Do not think they're a playoff team. Don't even think they get the seven wins. But over five and a half, I think Carolina can do that. And give me the Patriots under Mm -hmm. with some plus money. If you find four wins on this resume for the Pats, congrats. They're going to be booked as an underdog in all 17 games. Can they cover numbers? Maybe. Can they win games? No. Can they stumble into a couple? Sure, they were a four-win football team last year under Belichick in his final and 24th season in New England. It was the only time they won less than seven games. I don't expect it to be better this year. Patriots under four and a half wins. If you want to entice me with an alternate win total under of three and a half or even more plus money, I would hear you out. By the way, on the Patriots, I don't know. I don't think anybody thinks they're going to win week number one. But it just seems like no. the game flow, Ben, is going to determine game number one if you're going to get those four and a half wins, even in a loss. Right. Like if it's twenty-seven to three, like many people probably anticipated being in that game, which is crazy. Like on opening day, anything typically is supposed to happen. It's like there's no way they're winning five games. But maybe if they can yeah. hang around, like twenty-seven, twenty-one, it's like oh, maybe they can maybe steal a few games. I can't wait to watch that just to see because when we talk about that 35 to 3 efforts you're like oh my goodness this might be one of the historically bad teams we see on offense when it not necessarily should be that way now granted I like where you're going on the Panthers you get Deontay Johnson out of Pittsburgh you still got Adam Thielen there as a very good third down option you add some other young weapons and a quarterback coach that's your head coach now that goes hey look I had a turmoil kid last year. Did you see the contract he signed the year we had? We won the division, and we also went to the playoffs. I can do the same things for you. We're not calling for the Panthers to win the championship or the division. You're just calling for them to be competent. If they are, a competent football team, Ben, gets at least the six wins here. So I like where you're going with that one with the Panthers. 11th easiest schedule for Carolina. They play in the NFC South. I believe that is a benefit. The second most difficult schedule for New England. A detriment. Your division winner, DRS, you're optimistic about the New York Jets. Will it be the first divisional crown for Gang Green since 2002? It's an awesome division. Remove the New England Patriots. You have three teams jockeying for position up top. And also, let's keep in mind, the Buffalo Bills were the darlings of the past two years and also the darlings of the preseason here. And so they were the favorites at the FanDuel Sportsbook to actually win that division. Now it looks like it's going to be the Jets. And I find myself as well agreeing with the FanDuel Sportsbook and buying into the Jets. So it is correlated. If I think the Jets are going to get the 10 wins, They better be in the running to at least win that division at that plus 160 price. I think pound for pound, they're the most talented team on the roster in that division, and I'll take them. First divisional title since 2002. It would also clinch New York's first playoff berth since 2010, a 13-season playoff drought for the New York Jets, the longest in the major men's professional sports leagues in America. I'm going to the AFC South. It's a Mm. team I bet right away when the market opened up, when there was only five cents of difference between the Texans and the Jags. Houston had a great offseason. They are now a short favorite to win the AFC South, but I stick to my guns. Jacksonville was really good defensively a season ago. 12th best scoring defense in the league. I reference that because Trevor Lawrence is going to be healthy and better. The Jacksonville Jaguars got off to an 8-3 and three start before they dropped five of their final six mm-hmm. games. When they got off to an 8-3 and three start entering December, they were 8-3 and three in a minus 1,000 favorite to win the AFC South. They had the second easiest schedule in what we expect to be a competitive division. Jacksonville, plus 290. Like Season-long it. prop, fire yep. it away, DRS. 
Jaden Daniels over 575 and a half rushing yards, a rookie quarterback that has electric legs out there. Hey, that first read isn't open, Ben. We're not going to the second. We are running. Yes, I love it. Go, Jaden. How about a team captain in mile high? Bo Nix over mm. 2850 and a half. The number is now north of 3,000. Russell Wilson threw for 3,070 yards last year. Bo Nix will better that. The Mouth in the South joins us next on the early line. 